Hello and welcome to another episode of Focus on Tomorrow. Focus on Tomorrow is a Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit organization located in Chicago, Illinois. You can find us at focusontomorrow.org. You could also email us at focusontomorrow.org. Today, my guest is Uriel. Hi, Uriel. What's going on, man? Glad to be back. I'm happy to be back. Yeah. I'm so excited to be back. Uh, how have you been? I've been all right. How are you been? Good. <laughs> uh, so today, we're going to talk about uh, the 15-year-old grandson of the congressman, Davis, Danny Davis, okay. was shot was shot to death in his Inglewood, mm -hmm. Illinois' home, Friday evening. According to Chicago police, Javon Wilson, 15-year-old, was inside his home at 6.45 p.m. when 17-year-old and 17-year-old girl and a 15-year-old boy broke in mm -hmm. and argued and followed by and shot him in the head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Congressman Davis said, unfortunately, this is another example of 15-year-old gun, 15-year-old you know, kid getting shot with right. a gun never should have happened. If congressmen letting our letting or losing our kids violation are any safer than that, or what do we do about it? Um, personally, man, I mean, are kids safe? I think the best way to keep a kid safe is just, I mean, interaction with one another. I mean, getting to know that child and getting to know what situation they're going to. You know, a lot of the times, you know. We say, like, this is happening every day and all these problems shooting us, you know, it's an everyday thing because we live in Chicago. But, you know, a lot of the times, too, we got to, a lot of the times what I personally think is, like, you know, we could be safe if we just, if we just show kids a different way. You know what I mean? You just yeah. show them, you show them, that, you show them a different perspective on how to look at things and how to look at life. And I would, I would possibly think that it can, might stop. I'm not going to say it will stop, but I think it's a chance. You know what I mean? I mean, I know, I know for a fact it'll probably be hard to get a lot of the older kids, you know, from like 18 to 21, yep. to get them convinced because they lived their life long enough and they know, you know, they know for a fact that they don't want to do that kind of stuff and they mm -hmm. know what to do and they're big mm -hmm. and bad and they're grown. But I think when it comes to like the high school kids, you know, when it comes to like elementary kids, like high school kids, I personally think that they should really, they should really, really get interactions with like people who are positive with them. You know what I mean? And yeah. people who are successful. And you know, like Focus, you know, we get a bunch of kids who come, you know, who come from bad streets, who come from bad families, who never had the opportunity, the resources, to do anything that they liked. And what we do here is like we just basically give them the opportunity to do all kinds of videography. We give them opportunities to open up their minds and basically just to think of other stuff other than just violence. So for the congressman to say that, you know, if, if everyone is safe, um, everyone is not safe. You know, we're, it's a dangerous, a dangerous world. We live in a scary world. It's a really, really scary world. And especially being in a city where a lot of violence is occurring, you know, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to say if we're all going to be safe. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. like a, it's almost like a war zone almost. It's really, <laughs> you have to be really hesitant about the things you do sometimes. And, the, you know, the people you, the people you hang around with especially, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing too, like. You know, a lot of the times too, a lot of what these government, what these governments got, government officials got to do is, you know, they got to just look at the crowds of people. You know, look, look at the game bangers, look at, look at the group, the group of kids, and just see why, like why they're doing this kind of violence. You yeah. know, and yeah, just basically try to, try to, try to, try to stay your best attached to them and just open up their minds and elevate them a little higher than usual. You know, and. You know, it's it's really bad that, you know, the congressman's son had to get killed. You know what I mean? And yeah. God bless his soul. You know, no one wants it on any of that's And that's a 15-year-old kid we're talking about. And there was a female over there, a girl, actually, a 17-year-old girl. Like a, a yeah, was yeah, exactly. So it's like it's like, it's like like youth on youth crime. And, and we're like, talking about a headshot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's a, exactly what you're saying. It's a headshot. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a youth on youth crime. And, I mean, it's like, you know what I mean? These kids are just so exploited by the stuff they see on the internet the stuff they see on the streets and yeah. they just get adapted to it you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying because mm -hmm. i mean honestly personally i mean a lot of the, a lot of the time still the reason is you know they come from a bad home right you come you come raised bad you know but at the same time i mean it's all to you too you know what i mean i came from a bad home as well i i, I mean my family wasn't wasn't all perfect but what i did was i realized that this game banging and all this violence that's going on it has no point to it you know it has an end to it yeah. so what i did was you know what like Money maker, right? I guess money is the biggest factor for kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> in a way. So I guess I guess you want to do is like you want to find your you want to find something that you stand for, and you know that's gonna help you out financially, and mm -hmm. you know that's gonna help you big in the future. And if as long as something you love, whether you're hooping, whether you're you know what I'm saying, whether you're playing, whether you're shoot, whether you're recording, 
or whether you're doing any kind of cultural activities that you want to do with in the future, just stick to it. Yeah. Mainly just stick to it. Whether you have other jobs, you have other things, like if you have that as a hobby, really, really stick to it and like really, 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 really put your focus onto it. Because once you do that, you'll get distracted by all, this, all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And once you once you like focus well enough and you put your attention towards what you want to do, mm -hmm. You know, a lot more opportunities are going to open for you. And, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I basically think. Okay. Uh, Facebook is taking another step. Rita Hoyt and another follows information. Like, they say Facebook posts every Friday evening. Facebook is facing uh, a fail to cut, uh, cut out float and mm -hmm. phonies news articles and, and a run-up as the U.S. presidential election. Facebook has a long instead that is technology company and it's not it's not like a news public reporter or something and uh the reject idea that it should be held responsibility for the content that is uh you know platform do you think facebook is responsible for donald trump election like how he wanted <laughs> <laughs> no man i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily say like you know i mean first starting off with like the fake news feeds that's that's obvious i think the thing about like when it comes to social media and it comes to something like Facebook, um, you are who you click. Mm -hmm. You are what you see. You are what you like. And people take that from you. Like they, they rate you like that. They wanna they wanna they know like, you know, if you click on so many sports on sports ads or you yeah. click on a lot of food ads, you know, and you like it, the feed of Facebook, the timeline of Facebook is going to constantly you feed that, that kind of stuff because you just like it and you clicked on it and you interacted with it and you viewed it. So do I feel like Facebook has uh, any kind of responsibility for false advertising? Of course they do, and that's what they were talking about on there. Yeah. And I think that just goes on every day, and I think that's a perfect example of why of why social media could really ruin people, because we fall so much based on, on social media. Not only that, but because a lot of kids don't watch the news no more, and we don't watch, we don't watch anything on TV, social media... A lot of our updates, a lot of a lot of a lot of our news that we get around the world, or if we find out anything about the world, it's all through social media. It's all yeah. through Facebook. It's all through Kids Twitter. Kids staying in their phones. Yeah, exactly. Kids staying in their phones, don't doing all that. So it's like a lot of times, a lot of the information that we all get is through social media. That's the only that's the only information we get. So a lot of the times when we look at something through social media, something like Facebook, for example, mm -hmm. you know, if someone said they did this, then we're gonna believe it because it's on Facebook. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's that's totally not the case. And that's what, the media. You yeah, the media. media no. Yeah, of course, of course. That that's sort of the case. And not only that, but like this. Like the thing about us, we live in a world. That's, we live in a world now where it's just technology based, and it's like we're like in a big metaphor. We're relying on yeah, that. our yeah. life is like a big metaphor. The joke, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like we just we just constantly look at a picture and we look at it. So we look at something, we just laugh because we could understand it. We can all understand each other. Yeah. So my thing is like, does Donald Trump have any? Does Does Facebook have any like responsibility for his election? Yeah. I feel like they do have some kind of footfall for their election because I mean. For God's sakes, I mean, we're just, they're just throwing constant stuff at us. And yeah. it's so funny because, like, I look back at this and it's like, we see so many, so many news feeds about Donald Trump throughout the whole election. I don't know about you, but all year in my Facebook and my time, my Twitter, all yeah. I seen was memes and memes and memes and memes and skits. I didn't even want to get on Yeah, Facebook. and skits and skits of nothing like, but Facebook. News yeah, like, nothing but Facebook and Donald Trump, like, just in your face. So yeah. it's like, and they're just constantly throwing that feed in your face and just constantly showing you, like, all kinds of weird facts and That's what like Donald Trump question. does and what he, what doesn't he do yeah. and what makes him look bad, what makes him look good, what makes him do this and what makes him do that. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, all of that was for what? For him to win the election? So I was like, yeah, I mean, I think, I think a lot of the times, like, we need to, we need to be, we need to look ahead and look in the outer world of, of real perspective things, you know? Because a lot of times, the internet could really fool us. The internet could really fool us. I mean, for God's sake, that was my example right there. I mean, for God's sake, I mean, we all thought all these, all these memes and all these skits and all these strolls on Donald Trump the whole year was a good example of us saying, like, yeah, he has no possible way of losing, right? They're throwing yeah. He has no possible way of, of, of winning. He has no possible way of doing anything. And what happens, he ends up winning. So it's like, no, like... You know what I mean? What we see, what, what the media portrays, what we don't see in real life, and sometimes we have to, we have to look about that, and we have to, we have to look ahead of that. And we have to really focus ourselves and really know that we have to separate ourselves from what's real and what's fake. And a lot of the times, you know, it's based off opinions. And a lot of the times, it's basically, it's based off just people just trying to get likes, trying to get, trying to get views, trying to get, trying to get attention. And that's what Facebook's about. Facebook's just a platform for people to just express themselves in a way socially and. You know, economically way, economically in, in, in any kind of like, com like comedic way. So I believe that's what Facebook does. And would I blame social media for him? I wouldn't necessarily. 
I mean, half and half. I could say yeah, but no, but. I mean, yeah, I mean, I believe like with all these memes and all these shows, and yeah, I would, I would say social media has to do, has to take a real big part, especially within this election that happened this year. So I think yeah. social media took a really big part. This is like the first time I ever seen social media really dominant within like the elections, within like the election year. So Mark Zuckerberg needs to really, really get off those fake feeds and see what's legit and what's not legit. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to get into uh, technology afterwards, oh, but first, right. we're going to talk about the Ocolas. Virtual uh, reality event in October. October. Okay. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. 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 Yeah. My bad. Uh, demonstrated a way people might uh, use communication in the future, no and problem. wearing a headset. You know, robots, all that th type of stuff. The avatars could change our um, facial expression, make generous uh, events and card. What do you think about that? So he, so he basically created like a virtual avatar that you could do and you can interact with people, right? Is that what yeah. you're saying? Um, what I think about that, I think it's, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny and I think it's, I think it's a step of, um, it's a step of really improving the human lifestyle and how to interact with each other. Uh -huh. I mean, me personally, I know, I know for a fact technology is only going to get, is only going to get crazier. Technology is only going to possibly get better. Maybe. Yeah. We don't know. I'm not too sure. I'm not a witness and I've never really been doing it, but I mean, for him to do that, I think it was kind of genius of him. I mean, mm -hmm. the thing about the thing about us in social media, we're always looking for the next big thing, right? Yeah. We're always looking for the next. We're always looking for something we could possibly do. I mean, for God's sake, I mean, if you look at Facebook and Twitter from how it was three years ago to now, it's a lot different, right? Like yeah. you see, you could do a lot more posts now. You could check out a lot more videos. <laughs> There's even kids, like two years old kids. Who has like iPods and iPhones, and they don't even know how to use it. They still have it, you know. Exactly. I mean, technology has gone to another level. Exactly. Yeah, technology is on a crazier level now. Technology is on a level where people can understand it now. Yeah. You know, people can understand it easier now. Before, I remember technology where people was really confusing. It was really highly expensive, and people thought you were just a geek. Now, like you said, a child who's like five years old, four years old, or a grandma of of a hundred and some years <laughs> old could actually go on an iPad and actually go on the internet and know what she's doing, and they're not confused about it. Yeah. So, like to use virtual reality, it's kind of scary in a way, though, too. Like, yeah. you know, like interact like that virtually, like. I don't know, what's the next big step after we do, after we interact virtually, you know what I'm saying? Like, what happens, like, what happens, like, after that? Do we become, like, do we, like, time travel from there now? Like, do we try and travel from, like, one TV to the next? So it's like, I mean, in the same way, I, I just thought it was pretty genius. I mean, I think it's a good idea. It's a step of finding new ways of socializing with people and more creative, fun ways of just having fun with social media and using it to your nature. All right, uh, we could get move on to the present... Pluto, Pluto, uh, Spirit of Community Award okay. is the largest program in uh, recognized middle high schools. Students are volunteering from uh, local national levels, and the national winner around uh, is going to be around announced in February. But not but the Illinois ten top volunteers winning Nick Nicholas mm -hmm. Ram Kumar. Mm -hmm. Sorry about his if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, an uh, eighth grader at a universe, university of uh, Illinois high school has mm -hmm. raised nearly ten thousand dollars for laptops and computers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think the youth has more generous than uh, we think we could give them the credit for? Yes, I think. I think. I totally. I totally. 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 Totally agree. One hundred percent that the youth is more generous than people really think. I mean, because why? I mean, I don't know. When it comes to youth. You know, we have a, when we do any kind of education or we do any kind of school. You know, what school does for us it helps us it helps us think critically. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, it helps us helps it helps us open our mind. That's what school does. School makes you school gives you gives you a test, and it's you're forced it takes you to step open, by step. Yeah, you go step, step by step, step and, yeah. you're, and you're just forced to open up your mind and you're forced to think critically. You yeah. know what I mean? You're forced to see what's the outcome, what's the effect, why mm -hmm. they did that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What's right from wrong? Why they should do this? Why they should do that? What's beneficial for the world? What's beneficial for the community? Uh -huh. So it's like. Starting off with that with the youth, especially now, you know, we think critically. And not only that, but like going back to the last question, we live in a world that's where it's just social media social media based and technology based. So also everything's easier and not only that, but like I mean, we're we're ahead of everyone. Us youth, we pick up we pick up things way more faster than everyone. We we have an idea where we just if we have an idea we just stick to it and we'll do it, you know, and that's that's what's really crazy about the youth this year. I mean the youth is just 
we're so ahead of people and like a lot of times they get so confused and people get so like surprised that we're doing these kinds of things and we know how to do certain situations and we know how to work certain computers, certain phones and our parents don't, you know? Yeah. And right there, it just gives us an opportunity to just think critically, you know yeah. what I mean? Think critically, know what's right from wrong. And him raising $10,000 for a school is genius. I think it's really, really genius. I don't know how he did it. I want to know how he did it because I would love to raise $10,000 for something that I would do, but... That's just right especially there. Especially for eighth graders. Yeah, know. of course, yeah. especially for eighth grade. But right, that right there, he gives you, he tells you, like, you know, you're able to make an impact at any age. And you're able mm -hmm. to make an impact no matter what, no matter where you're from, and no matter what you're trying to do, whether it's trying to fundraise, whether it's trying to really, like, you know, get your mind going. I think, personally, it was, I think it was just, it was great. I mean, what do you think about it? What do you think about him raising 10000 Consider you're, like, you go to you go to school still, right? You're still in high school. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that, like, affects other youth? Do you think that really, like... That affects you in a way? Like, how, how do you think that oh, affects yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, I have a, a story to tell. But what's it called? Like, a student walks into a class and don't have a laptop or a computer with the other students having laptops and computers. Right. And him not, you know, learning the experience that the other students are. So it's going to be a bad, you know, environment for him and further, you know. Right. So, yeah. That's what I think. You would think that then? Yeah. yeah. So, like, I would, yeah. So, I think, I think, I think we're really generous, you know. At but, the same uh, do you think form of communication will affect humans interact with another and another human being? What do you mean by like technology wise? Like technology -wise. Is that going back to the last question or yeah. going back to the first question? Let's go back, back to this question. Last question. The last question that yeah. we were doing about Mark Zuckerberg and social media. Yeah. And how it was. Um, yeah, and maybe yeah, I, I can I could kind of say that it will affect you know how everyone connects uh, you know interactively because you know before. It's much easier meeting someone in person. It's really different meeting someone in person than what you're doing like, on the phone, right? Or what yeah. you're doing when you're doing Skype or how, or like when you're, or when you're doing anything like that. So how do I think it will probably affect the generation? I mean, would it affect the human, I mean, in a way, maybe if we, if we, I think if we go overboard for this and we just trying to find easier ways for people to, you know, communicate with each other. Like mm -hmm. I said, I guess we're going to start time traveling and we're going to start doing something. Uh -huh. But I think if we just, I think if like, if that ever happens, I think... Like travel in a spaceship? Yeah, <laughs> like aliens or something, right? Yeah, it was, it was yeah, something like that. Yeah, it yeah. was something like that. But it's like, I don't know, man. I think it really can. I think it really could. But honestly, it's just, I think it's just to each his own. I think it's, it, it all depends how people how people really react to it. And that's why I think people should go to school for this type of stuff. And yeah. people should really learn how social media works and how it's based. Especially because we live around it so much. I truly believe that everyone... Everyone should know how social media really works, no matter uh -huh. what. Whether if you have, whether if you don't have a Facebook or anything like that, but just everything we do, man, from the Google searches, from every little cooking video that we do, and it's like, that's fun. That's fun. So like to change the way of how to interact with people. Yeah, Google has man. so much information. Yeah, like that's Google crazy. has so much information off us already. Like you know what I'm saying? Like people are already like there. People are already knowing about everything we Google search, and people yeah, already know about every Google answer. On Everyone's Google. looking at that. You know what I mean? So it's like. Yeah. For you to like find a better way for us to interact, it could be a hit or miss, man. It could be a mm -hmm. hit or miss. You know what I mean? Because yeah. now it could be like kids don't even want to meet with each other no more. You know what I mean? Like what's gonna happen when we get a job interviews and we or we have opportunities to meet someone like a young lady, yeah. or we just or you know just being face to face like in reality with someone is just gonna work way better than just like you know virtually talk to them. Mm -hmm. You know maybe you're right there with them. Maybe it's gonna all work out, but at the same time. It might not work. It might. It might be bad, man. It might. It might just turn out to be crazy because no one's gonna ever have. No one in the human world is ever gonna interact anymore. You know, we're not gonna go back to the times no where we're standing next to each other and we're communicating with each other. You know, pretty yeah. soon we're gonna have to start. We're gonna start eating in different places now. You know, in the same location, and it's not the same as you going there and interacting with people. So maybe they take it down a notch and not make it too crazy. Like if they just make it like. You make it all right, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, cause I mean, how old are you? You're 18, right? No, I'm about to turn 18. You're next about month. to turn 18 yeah. next month. So, like, do you think social media has changed for you? I mean, you're only you're it 18. Has, it has, like, have right. you seen it? Have you seen it progress? And do you think like, do you hey. think like the way you use the way you use so like technology and social media changes the way you interact with like kids? Yeah, that's true. What's it called? Improvise a lot of technology like calling others because back then you know people it was really hard to call others especially in like the 90s if i talk but i wasn't really born in the 90s i don't know but right. i know that uh technology <clears throat> has been like really crazy on uh, to another level where like you know now you could do anything with the technology any answer you could like cheat on yeah. your math test yeah. and you know get an answer off technology you know you could contact anyone there's a lot of things you could you do with technology yeah 
Exactly. So like so that's your answer right there. So yeah. it tells you like you know what I'm saying like look how fast look how fast the world is just moving. That's what's scary, yeah. man. Just like it's I just I just I just really want the I just really want the world to just slow down sometimes, man. I feel like it just moves so fast. Yeah, time goes fast. We're always looking for the next thing, man. That's the thing. Like iPhones, like iPhones. For God's sakes, people are probably mm -hmm. still enjoying their iPhone fives. <laughs> you know what I mean, still trying to find out. We're already at seven, so it's yeah. like. And there's you know? like eight coming out. Here. Exactly, there's like eight more coming out. So it's like, dude, like, they don't even give it a chance for people to enjoy enjoy stuff because we're just trying to move so fast and we're always looking for the next big thing. You know, we get, we look at something, we find something, we create something, and then we enjoy it, right, for like a little bit amount of time. And we, yeah. Right, we, we just use it up and use it up and use it up. We just eat it up until it's like, so we're done with it. And it happens so fast. And what happens? We just use it up and we just throw it out. All right, what's the next one? I'm bored. <laughs> you, know? you know? So it's like, I don't know, man. Like, honestly, like, we should just, I think when it comes to, I think when it comes to technology in the world, we should just really, 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 really try to slow it down just a little yeah. bit. Just so people can catch up and people can understand, like, what's yeah. going on, you know? Mm. I think that's just about it. Uh-huh. So let's zoom back to our old questions about 10,000 laptops and computers. And the question was, why is it important to volunteering for kids to go over there? I think it's good for kids to go over there because I mean it just gives them an opportunity to gives them an opportunity to just you know it gives them an opportunity to engage in themselves and to have more resources that they don't have and that's that's one thing that that's one thing that you know that's a problem mm -hmm. you know especially for a lot of rural neighborhoods and kids who you know do bad things you know the thing is yeah. like we don't have the resources man you go to a suburban school a uh, school in the suburbs they have mm -hmm. everything they have laptops they yeah. have all the coaches for basketball they uh -huh. have all the coaches for football they have an mm -hmm. awesome lunch they have the great books they have a great staff of teachers and students that were just going to take care of you and they're just going to give you the right programs and give you the right things to make you to make sure you succeed whereas in a lot of other schools you know a lot of public schools of course you know we all live in rural neighborhoods you know where it's really bad mm -hmm. so because of that you know a lot of schools are not funded mm -hmm. you know what i mean we don't have the fund we don't have the kind of funds and we don't have the kind of money that these other rich schools have so what happens we lack resources mm -hmm. and what happens when we lack resources we end up doing the research we end up getting attached to the resources that are outside all right we have I mean? a yes or no question for you mm -hmm. have you ever volunteered yes i have volunteered man this focus on tomorrow yeah. is actually the first thing that i volunteered for like i said focus on tomorrow what it was it was basically just um, a high school program that works with kids and lets them, yeah. you know, create their own content, video content. But before, you know, all this after school matters, now your kids are yeah. getting paid. We were just a program that just started with no pay. You know, we were just a program that that students would just go on their own every Saturday morning with no pay, no yeah. transportation money. We would go and we would work. And all right, uh, let's let's get into uh, Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls. Yeah, all the right. Chicago Bulls are in right. fifth place. Ooh. In the Eastern Conference. Ooh. Do you think the team is performing better and expected to yes, be better in this yes, season? Yes, 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 yes. I truly, 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 truly believe that mm -hmm. the Bulls are going to be great. We are going to win a championship this year, and I'm just saying that because I'm just a hardcore Bulls fan. I'm not. I mean, realistically, it's going to be hard. Of course, you know, realistically, mm -hmm. if you think basketball wise, a lot of good competition out there. But me, I'm a Bulls fan so yes man what does the yes. team has to do i think i think we're gonna do what great. does the team has to do to catch up with the cavaliers the keys that they gotta catch up with the cavaliers yeah cavaliers yeah. Is the number one team right now best thing is man we need they need body they gotta they need body and they need people who are gonna score man you see right now the yeah. bulls are doing good and the reason why they're doing good is because we have that consistency in scoring now mm -hmm. we never had before you know what i'm saying we never had that kind of consistency ever i never seen that kind of scoring before in bulls maybe i had before of course but I mean, this kind of scoring alone, like within like you know within the first half, the how we're averaging yeah. like almost thirty points, forty points within the half, mm -hmm. it's amazing because we we had that struggle for so long where we couldn't we couldn't find anyone who could we couldn't find anyone who could just consistently score for us. Yeah. And there are a lot of times when we were on the half court, you know, the Bulls struggled. We yeah. struggled. We we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't score. We were just stuck in the half court, and we were just stuck there and stuck there and stuck there. You know, Rose, of course, he had Noah, who wasn't offensively, you know, gifted at all, but he had a great heart, which I love him and I miss him so much. Yeah, you know, I miss him so much, and he was a, oh man, I, I I was a little broken when he when he got when he left. But overall, it wasn't a. It wasn't really, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't personal. It was a basketball decision. So, of course, yeah. they had to make some moves to win a ring, right? Well, we all want to get wins. So, and how you win is just basically, man, by heart. We have the heart. And the yeah. thing is, like, now that we have the kind of scoring that we have now, you know, we're scoring on a consistent basis. You know, we have veteran talent, as in Rajon Rondo. We had Dwayne Wade. You know, we had that kind of, we had that kind of veteran talent where they've been here before and they know what it takes to win and they know what it takes to succeed. So, 
You um, mix that up with a youth, with a, with a youthful team who's really good in offense, you know, yeah. who could really pass the ball around. Not like that, yeah. you mix that with Jimmy Butler, mm -hmm. who is, you know, the best player in the NBA right now, yep. in my perspective. Yeah, you know, who is the best player in the NBA right now? You mix that up with the champion, with the championship people. I still like Rose. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Rose too, man. I'm not, I'm not pointing too, fingers, yeah, yeah, but too, uh, yeah. is, is Chicago happy that Bulls are being uh are better than Knicks? I think that's kind of childish to ask that kind of like question if the Bulls are better. I personally don't think I personally don't think. Anyone cares? I think I think what the Knicks are doing on their own is on their own, you know, and that's uh -huh. them. But I mean, overall, yeah, I guess I can say I'm happy the Bulls are doing better than the Knicks. But I don't, at the same time, I don't care. The Knicks are the Knicks. They're gonna do them. I'm focused on the Bulls, uh -huh. and that's all. Any last thing you would like to say? Oh uh, yeah, stay happy world, happy Monday. Um, have a great Thanksgiving, and yeah, prosper. All right. Focus on tomorrow is a nonprofit organization located in Chicago, Illinois. And you could also contact us at focusontomorrow.org. You could also email us at focusontomorrow.org. I would like to thank my guest, Yuyo, for Thank joining you guys. Today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And, uh, we'll see you guys next time.